and welcome to Operation Twin Shells. I'm Camille Salzar Hadaway, and it's time to hear straight from the developers themselves all about Year 9, Season 3 of Rainbow Six Siege. This season brings an innovative new operator and a versatile new weapon. Let's kick it off with an overview of the season from Creative Director Alexander Karpazes. Year 9 Season 3 is all about Operation Twin Shells. But before we jump into that, it's really important that we acknowledge that we heard from you and we haven't met the expectations that you had for Operation New Blood. And we want to reinforce that we are dedicated to this game and that we are putting more resources than ever into it. And you'll start to see that with Operation Twin Shells. Operation Twin Shells is all about the new operator as well, Scopos. This is Kiri Galanos, who's one of the original operators from Rainbow Six. And she comes with two shells that she can control. This is a testament to the creativity of the game and the talent of our team to come up with unique operators like this that are still game changers. We're also introducing updates to anti-cheat and anti-toxicity, which is a major priority for us for the future of the game. And we have more like the Siege Cup coming in beta phase. We also have balancing changes. We have After Action 2.0 coming online. And we have so much more for you. We can't wait to dig into it. So let's begin. Let's talk about an important topic right off the bat. Cheating and toxicity are not just concerns for you. They are critical issues for us as well. To address this, we've restructured our team to dedicate even more resources to these challenges. Now, to share exclusive details and updates on the current and upcoming player protection projects, here's Alexander Karpazes and product owner Lancelo Seiji. We want to assure you that we have more than just one security system in place. More than just BattleEye, we have six detection systems running at any given time so that we can catch cheaters. And we're constantly improving these systems. On top of this, we want to talk about a pillar as well for our anti-cheat, which is binary hardening. Binary hardening is the act of obfuscating and making it harder for cheat makers to access the game. Think of it like a giant library where a cheat maker is trying to find a specific book. For us, we'll be trying to change that book's location as much as possible. And even on top of that, changing the shelves and the entire library so that it's as confusing and as hard for a cheat maker as possible so that in the end, they cannot effectively make cheats for our game. When it comes to Siege Cup, for those that have won and have cheated, they will be banned. But of course, their teammates will have access revoked from Siege Cup as well, ensuring that competitive integrity remains in Siege. Another area of improvement is time to ban. 75% of bans are happening 12 hours sooner now. And this is something that we'll be working on in the future to reduce that time as much as possible. As you may have seen in our August update for Anti-Cheat, the team has grown in size. It's now a multidisciplinary team that is actually one of the largest in-house anti-cheat teams in the world for any given project. And for us, that means we're totally dedicated to making sure that Siege is the best it can be when it comes to anti-cheat. In the anti-toxicity team, our mission is simple, ensuring a safe space for all players in Rainbow Six Siege. It means protecting the community from recurrent and highly toxic players, while rewarding recurrent positive behavior. Our mission includes handling features like reverse friendly fire, text ad censorship, reports, abandoned penalties, match cancellation, commendation system, and of course, the reputation system. Our philosophy centers around three key principles, transparency, understandability, and clarity. In its current state, the reputation system has some weaknesses and is not trusted by the community. This is why we decided to overhaul it it means reviewing its structure, the action that are feeding it, and the in-game UI. And to be clear, a single negative action will have a minimal impact on you. Only the recurrence of this action will affect your reputation. We aim to give you access to those changes in Yana in S4. The system will remain in beta. It means no impact on standing until we are 
100% confident it meets your and our standards of transparency, understandability and clarity. Additionally, we are still working on some very impactful features that we cannot wait to share with you by the end of the year. When you finish a match in Operation Twin Shells, things are going to have a brand new look. Please welcome senior game designer Vladimir Kozik to walk you through the new post-action report. Plus, game director Joshua Mills is here to talk about boosting the abilities of your drones. In new season, we are introducing post-action report in a completely new dimension. Instead of operator cards, there will be a new screen with teammates represented as 3D operators located on the same map they just played. Here they can command teammates and opponents. On the next screen, instead of sequence of separated tabs, all progression like crank, clearance, battle pass, also including challenges this time, will be comfortably organized on a single page layout that highlights the most important information I'm so excited with this update. I can't wait our players try it out and share their feedback with us. Drone Boost is a new feature coming to our attacker lineup. The goal here is to continue to reinforce our attackers, make sure they have the tools to get the job done. Intel is king in Siege and keeping your drone alive is crucial to getting that intel. Some of the changes we did to Solus helped with that, but we want to go further. We want to give more power to our players, specifically the attackers. So Drone Boost means you can actually boost your drone a maximum of three times, three seconds per boost. You can cancel it mid-boost to quickly evade, quickly close distances, and each boost once expended takes six seconds to recharge. So the boost resource system is actually kind of similar to Maverick's Torch in the sense that you can cancel the action at any time and it doesn't fully deplete the boost. So you can cut up a boost as needed, but again, you'll only have three full ones. Drone Boost isn't limited to just the default drone. The Kludges from Bravo or even Twitch's drone can also take advantage of this feature. If Mozzie happens to get his hands on one of these drones and there's still charges left, so that's the key factor here. If there's still charges on that drone, now they're Mozzie's to use. So the future of drones in Siege is really focused on their economy, which means making sure they can survive longer or at least giving our players the ability and the tools they need in order to make sure their drones can survive longer. They should be used more regularly in the middle and late game of the rounds. And we want to make sure that you have those tools in your arsenal to be able to make things happen. If you like competition, this next update is for you. The new Siege Cup beta is coming this season for select players to test their five stacks in intense tournament play. A new reward system is coming as well for both Siege Cup and ranked matches plus a few more interesting updates that live content director Christopher Budgen is going to tell you all about. In Year 9 Season 3, Operation Twin Shells, we're happy to announce the beta of Siege Cup. We made the decision to restrict Siege Cup beta to the PC platform because we can be much more reactive. If something happens with the Siege Cup, we can address it much faster than with other platforms. We really want to launch Siege Cup in its full form in Year 9 Season 4. Competitive integrity is imperative for Siege. That's why having a beta to make sure we can register the squads, formulate the brackets, distribute the rewards, we have to get it right. To register your team for the Siege Cup beta, follow the QR code or the link that you see on the screen and get ready for news about the first Siege Cup coming your way. With Siege Cup, you have to register as a five stack meaning that you have to bring four of your friends, get ready to compete until the tournament is over. Once the Siege Cup starts, you're there committed to the Siege Cup to play until you get eliminated or of course win the tournament. We see the Siege Cup beta as our most competitive playlist, even more so than ranked, because the stakes are extremely high. The first Siege Cup will be near the beginning of Year 9 Season 3, and after the finish of the first tournament, we'll run another every two weeks for the remainder of Year 9 Season 3. In Year 9, Season 3, we're introducing a new currency called Competitive Coins. Competitive Coins are exclusive to our competitive playlists, that being Ranked and Siege Cup. Get as far as you can within the ranks, as well as play as many Siege Cups as you can to get Competitive Coins to open these exclusive packs. In Year 9, Season 3, all console players will receive one free Competitive Pack. 
move up the ranks, get as many competitive of coins as you can, so you can continue to open packs in that collection. Starting in year nine, season three, when you're waiting for your next match, whether it's in ranked, quick match, or even the siege cup, you'll be able to enter the shooting range to stay warmed up, ready for your next match. Additionally, we've also added a cover feature within the aiming lane. Now you can have covers pop up from the ground, dummies will hide behind them and take position as you try to eliminate them as you warm up your aim. Both PC and console players will be able to enter the shooting range during matchmaking. 1v1s have become more popular within Siege and that's why we've now added a 1v1 custom preset in custom game. There are two presets for 1v1s in custom game, short and long. The short preset allows you to play six rounds with four rounds to win and one overtime round. In the long preset, it's the first to eight rounds, but if the match gets tense and it's really tight, there are three overtime rounds. In both of the 1v1 presets, all maps are available. The prep phase has been lowered to 20 seconds. It's perfect for one player to get set up and ready for the attack. The bomb game mode is the featured game mode in both 1v1 presets. Roll swap every round. You play attack, then defense. This will continue until whoever finally wins the match. With every new season, the question arises, which operators will be targeted for balancing and how will they change? Game designer David Perpignan has all the answers, plus spoilers, it's Solus, Dokovi, and Nook. We are implementing the second round of changes for Solis. We know that the, our previous package was uh, a bit harsh. We've been monitoring data uh, just to see that everything went well. What we've seen is a decrease in ban rate and also in presence, but a steady trend on win rate. This new wave of changes for Solis is based in three pillars. The first pillar is the detection mechanic. Now Solis will use only the center of the screen to detect the gadgets, and those gadgets will be unidentified. You won't know what they are. The second pillar is the scanning or identification mechanic. Now we call it overclock, and once you trigger the overclock, your energy is refilled, and you'll be able to see every gadget in the center of the screen as identified. You, you'll know what they are. Aside from that, Solis will emit a warning to every observation tool in the enemy team within the range of detection. So they will know that you are overclocking and that you are seeing their gadgets. The third pillar is the energy access. Now Solis, Spec I.O. will last longer and will require less energy to be activated while reloading. Also, these new changes give us more balancing levers that will help us adjust solids in the future. Doka Evi right now can generate a lot of pressures in defenders, specifically at the beginning of the round. That's why we're taking a look to the resource management in her ability. Now Doka will start with zero charges at the beginning of the round and we'll get one every 45 seconds, but only up to two per round. These changes should reduce the pressure on defenders now. They should have more time to prepare their setup. And Doka AV, players will be encouraged to survive longer to have a greater impact in the match. Global abilities like Doka AV's Logic Bomb have a great impact in the game and sometimes with little effort from the players. We are aware of this and we will take a look at it in the future, being part of bigger changes for the game. See you around. So Nock is receiving a buff. We think that camera scrubbing and intel deception is how stealth should look in Rainbow, and that's what Nock does. The changes we are making are affecting how Nock's ability consumes energy. Instead of being time-based, they will be action-based. That means that some actions like walking won't consume any of your energy, but if you sprint or shoot, your energy will be consumed. These changes aim to make Nock more patient. We want Nock to be better at flank watching, cutting rotations, and increasing the uncertainty on defenders. We want them to feel like there's a monster in the house. Nock and Smokes, FMG9 is getting a buff. We are reviewing its recoil to make it more comfortable when you're shooting at longer distances, specifically when you're using magnified scopes. The objective of these changes is to improve the player perception and balance of those operators while keeping the frustrations away. There will be more changes in this season. For example, we are taking a look at the proximity alarm and its synergy with Sentry, and also at the delay timer for explosions on the Claymore. A big update for Versus AI is coming in Operation Twin Shells. As you'll now be able to play as a defender and face off against a squad of attacker bots. For more, here's AI programmer Ariel Montre Delaire. 
Versus AI is a game mode designed for new players to provide them with a safe environment where they can learn and practice before their first ranked experience. In Year 8 Season 4, we introduced Versus AI for the first time. Since then, we keep adding more operators to play with and against, more supported maps, and we keep integrating more AI behaviors. This season will be significant. We're introducing Versus AI 2.0. Given that Siege is an asymmetrical game, we want to give the players the opportunity to play the other side. For the first time, players are going to be able to play the defenders against a full team of AI attackers. The AI attacker team will feature five operators, Ash, Thatcher, Termite, Nomad and Sledge. As a defender, the player will be able to choose between 16 operators, including the new one, Scopos. New players are going to have the opportunity to learn how to rehack to those attackers' behaviors, but it will also give them some ideas of how to play themselves when it's their turn to play the attackers. Both beginner and advanced game mode are going to offer the full match experience at launch. Similar to a casual game, the player is going to enter as either a defender or an attacker against a full team of AIs. They're going to play on one of our eight supported maps, and after two rounds, they're going to switch sides. We've heard your feedback, and we want to make sure that Versus AI gives a real feel of what it's like to play Siege. It's now time to talk about the new operator, Scopos. This Greek defender brings a new dimension of tactical possibilities to the fight through her twin shells. Talos and Colossus. For insight into the visual design of this operator, we'll hear from art director Joanna Sui. And for a breakdown of the new gameplay opportunities she offers, we'll go to game designer Justin Laranje Alualia. Scopos is from Ravenshield era and her name is Coris uh, Galanos. Her visual uh, design is really based off of her um, story background um, and the trauma that she went through. In the anime that was released from the year 9 season 1, in the mission uh, there was Daniel Bogard and uh, Jared Morris at that time trying to stop the bomb maker. In the end you uh, see a giant explosion and it was actually exactly that moment where she stopped being able to walk. Ever since then she's a wheelchair user. She's been in a relentless chase trying to seek prosecution to stop Deimos. All that toll took a effect on her face. She looks very gaunt. She has eye bags, wrinkles, and wear and tear. Scopos is a master strategist. Uh, she adapted her wheelchair into her command center like a pilot seat. She uses the shells to be part of the action. In game you can hear her, you can see her face when you swap between the two shells. When we're designing her uh, wheelchair and the robots, we really had in mind to make sure that she feels very grounded. So we went uh, with analog, old technology look. We really want to establish the fact that it's not smart AI robots. They're not invincible. They can be destroyed. Uh, when she loses Talos, Colossus, she's losing a part of her again. So for the design of the robots, um, we wanted to differentiate the two so you can identify them easily on the field. The difference are in the antennas, the shoulder pads, and colors and patterns are distinct to one another. We made sure to have the analog look by physically having buttons that you can push. They're, they're wires that you can see and they're not touch screens, they're not holograms, they are something that you can touch and feel. Back when she was a field agent, Kyure surveyed the area from afar as a sniper. Now, she still watches from a distance, but in a different way. Thanks to her new tech, Scopos is able to maintain a wide network of control unlike any other defender. That's because what Scopos brings to the field is not one, but two remotely controlled robotic operators. These shells, named Talos and Colossus, make up the V10 Pantheon system. At any given moment, one of Scopos' shells will be in an active state, where it functions like an operator, while the other remains in an idle state, where it functions like a powerful piece of defensive utility. Scopos' control allows her to swap the states of these shells, quickly delivering offensive or defensive power where it's needed most. Scopos' active shell works much like any other operator. It can move, shoot, and use gadgets. It's also Scopos' primary lifeline. If a shell is destroyed while it's active, Curie's link is severed, and she's functionally dead for the rest of the round. 
Two bodies does not mean two lives. Meanwhile, Scopos' idle shell will take on a defensive posture, deploying an integrated shield that functions much like a deployable shield secondary gadget. While in this state, the idle shell can be used as an observation tool by Kyrie and her allies. Additionally, Scopos can access her idle shell's camera directly at any time with the gadget button. While Scopos is looking through her idle shell's camera, she'll have the option to swap shells. Activating the swap sequence will put her active shell into idle mode and put her idle shell into active mode. The only catch is that the active shell needs to be in a position where it can deploy its shield to perform the swap. Scopos's HUD has an indicator that'll make this easier. In fact, Scopos's HUD will display plenty of useful information about both shells, including whether the idle shell is under attack or being affected by an EMP. Scopos is a very tactically oriented operator that requires players to collect data and quickly act on it to maximize her potential. A strong Scopos player is one that makes frequent use of her idle shell to guide the actions of her active shell. For most players, Scopos will likely be a shallow roamer, operating near the bomb site while having the means to extend into a deeper roam or fall back and anchor as needed. If used strategically, she has the power to be one of the most mobile operators in the game. Scopos' idle shell can be a very strong piece of utility. Having the combined properties of a deployable shield and a bulletproof camera, this shield can offer a large amount of intel from relative safety. Scopos' idle shell is most effective when placed in key areas for the defenders to hold so that it can provide information and serve as a launching point for when the enemy least expects it. Tano's coming out. Scopos is bringing a brand new gun to Siege, the PCX-33 Assault Rifle. Kyure may not be bringing a sniper rifle into battle, but make no mistake, her shells are still packing some serious firepower. This weapon is precise, deadly, and heavily customizable, making it a versatile tool for a versatile defender. For a sidearm, Scopos carries a P229, a throwback to Kyure's days in the Greek Special Forces. Scopos also has access to secondary gadgets. These are shared between her two shells. Her first option is impact grenades, a great choice to maximize her mobility and roaming potential. Alternatively, Scopos can bring proximity alarms. These synergize great with her idle shell, helping her know exactly the right time to take action. The Pantheon shells are two health, two speed operators, having been built for a balance between durability and mobility. Given their unique nature, Scopos' shells have a few special interactions. A good rule of thumb is to think of her active shell as an operator and her idle shell as a gadget. The first interaction you might wonder about is EMPs and gadgets that target electronic devices, like IQ. While Scopos' shells are electronic, the active shell has an active countermeasure that protects it from anti-electronic effects. It won't completely stop them, but it will prevent Scopos' active shell from being fully disabled by an EMP. This protection doesn't extend to the idle shell, however. Disabling effects will prevent Scopos from using the camera and swap features. Scopos' greatest counter is Dokubi. The hacker's calls are a threat to any roamer, but they also block Scopos' strongest escape plan. Additionally, Dokubi's universal hack can give her team access to the idle shell's camera. Brava's clutch drone can overheat Scopos' idle shell. However, this takes a while and gives Kyure a warning on her HUD. If she's fast enough, Scopos can swap to activate her countermeasures and prevent the overheat. In addition to being an electronic gadget, Scopos' idle shell's shield can be destroyed with explosives and similar effects, leaving the idle shell exposed for an easy kill. The glass can also be shattered, preventing allies from fully benefiting from its utility. A well-placed ash charge, frag grenade, or florist drone can make quick work of an undefended idle shell. The biggest threats to Scopos are her direct counters, so she benefits greatly from allies who protect her from them. Catchers like Jaeger and Wamai can protect her idle shell from explosives, and other denial gadgets like those from Mute, Mozzi, and Tubrow can stop many of Scopos' greatest enemies. Being made of metal, Scopos' shells can't benefit from healing effects. Doc's stims, Thunderbird's Kona stations, and Rook's armor won't help the shells. They also can't get put in a down state, and they don't breathe, meaning they're immune to toxic effects like smoke and Fenrir. That last fact can open the floor to some aggressive combos. Uh, four eliminated. Another strong approach to Scopos is to double down on intel. 
Maestro, Valkyrie, and Echo can offer more insight into enemy positions and even provide some distractions. That can be more than enough to let Scopos get into position and go for the kill. Scopos is designed to embody the key aspects of being a defender, gathering information and swiftly responding to attacker strategies. Scopos brings a level of adaptability that, if left unchecked, can turn the tide on even the strongest of attacks. We'll be keeping a close eye on her in the test server and throughout the season to see what players can do with her. You won't see his face, ever, but you'll probably recognize his voice as he's a big part of the Siege community. It's Marley, and he's here to give you his own special brand of insight into the new operator, new balancing updates, and all that Operation Twin Shells has to offer. First impression of the new operator was definitely, oh, they've broken the game, this is it. But then when you see how it actually plays, it's amazing, it's mind blowing, and it's definitely the most versatile operator on defense. The new weapon she's got is uh, <laughs> another assault rifle on defense. I love it, I love that weapon. The best strategy that I've found with the new operator so far is definitely finding my typical mirror window hiding spots on defense and planting one of the shells in the corner and hoping everybody walks right past it and then switching to the shell when needs be and uh, yeah, the rest is the rest is history. During the playtest, the hardest counter that I noticed definitely feel like Flores drones are a big issue. If you're leaving your body somewhere, it's gonna get destroyed. The balancing changes this season have got me really excited. The changes to Nock are really exciting. I'm gonna be playing her completely differently to how I used to. I'm gonna be sitting under cameras and uh, yeah, really exciting. And I'm glad to see the new Solace change as well. I think that's a great change. Now you'll know when there's a Solace below when you're droning and I think that's amazing. Are oh, the Siege Cup's gonna be another level. So ranked is sweaty and fun and competitive, but Siege Cup is gonna bring a whole new level of sweat and passion to Rainbow Six Siege that I can't wait for. Who will I want to challenge in the 1v1 custom match? <laughs> what a silly question. Jinxie, I'm ready. Overall, I think it's a really refreshing and exciting season. Year 9 Season 3 is bringing what I think is one of the most exciting operators I've seen in a long time. I can't wait to see all the fun and different plays coming from people. And I just think overall, alongside the balancing changes, it's just going to be a great season and I can't wait for it to launch. And that's the full rundown for Operation Twin Shells, which is hitting the season test server tomorrow. Jump in and see how Scopus, Talus, and Colossus change the way you defend a site. And as always, remember to report issues you encounter while playing to R6Fix for a chance to earn a tidy reward for your efforts. Now, don't leave just yet, because we've got one more thing for you. It's Jaeger in space! Thank you.